On Chris Hadfield's watch as commander of the International Space Station, he's not only kept it safe and in good working order to carry out science experiments, but through all of the extra things he's done, he's dramatically raised the profile of the program and become one of the best known astronauts of his day. Tom Marshburn, Ravon Romanenko, and Chris Hatfield making their way towards the International Space Station. From the moment of liftoff, it was expected Chris Hadfield would score another first as a Canadian, commander of the International Space Station. But then Hadfield started tweeting, spellbinding, high-resolution photos he was taking of Earth, lots of pictures that triggered worldwide buzz on the Internet. Shaving in space takes a little more care. Then came the videos made for YouTube sketches of everyday life in space. Because we're going to open up our tortilla. Whether it was videos on the internet or direct links with classrooms in Canada, Hadfield's down-to-earth delivery helped him connect with regular Earthlings about the importance and wonder of space exploration. And connect, he did. I'm calling. This is Shatner. Do you hear me? Mr. Shatner, this is... A real Canadian space, space commander space talking to a fictional ISS, one. The kind of moment that made Hadfield an internet viral video star. So how do you top that? Well, how about this? At half a thousand tons, 90 minutes moon to sun. A bullet can't go half this fast. He recorded this song from space. Bare naked lady Ed Robertson helping out on Earth. Is where I'm from and also where I'm going to. But don't think Commander Hadfield was just mugging for the cameras his whole mission. On his watch, they did a record number of science experiments, and the publicity has a purpose. Hadfield wants people on Earth to see their planet the way he sees it from space. To see it as one small place, one bubble of air that keeps us all alive, that we're responsible for. And he may have one last big job on his way back home. Because he speaks Russian and because he's a former fighter pilot, he's the first Canadian qualified to help fly the Soyuz. Now it lands mostly in automatic mode, but if they have to override that and fly it manually, he's ready to help fly the Soyuz and land it here in Kazakhstan. Back to you.